How can you know if you're hearing the voice of the Lord? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson and thank you so very much for joining me. I want to talk today about something that I think interests most Christians and that is hearing from the Lord. Of course, we believe, and let's start off right here from the beginning, that God has spoken to us through his written word. He's been speaking to people through his written word for uh, centuries, actually thousands of years. And, you know, God's words that he spoke a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago, they're still good and worth uh, reading and memorizing and meditating upon and, of course, obeying when they offer us instruction. You know, under the uh, Old Covenant in the o Old Testament, God raised up prophets, and these are folks who, you know, spoke on God's behalf, and people listened to them as if it was God speaking because it was God speaking. All right. And, and of course, if you're a Bible believer, you know that the New Testament also says that there's uh, such a thing as the ministry of a New Testament prophet. Uh, Agabus is one who's listed in the book of Acts specifically as a prophet. He foretold of certain things that would come to pass, and they did come to pass. He was not like so many of the modern uh, so-called prophets who make these uh, predictions that never come to pass, or they make so many predictions and one out of a hundred comes to pass, and they say, ooh, look, I'm a prophet. Or their prophecies are so vague that they can never be held accountable to them, or they make them all conditional so that there's no responsibility on them to be accountable, to actually be accurate. And so they blame it on, you know, the people didn't do what God said. And so therefore that's why it didn't come to pass. These are all just the games and tricks of little children who are playing dress up and they're dressing up as prophets. So I guess there's a lot of advice that I would want to give when it comes to hearing the voice of the Lord. But one of the first ones would be after, of course, reading and obeying the Bible. Because if you're really desperate to hear from God and you sincerely want to hear from God, that's the first place you go. And you'll work on obeying and doing everything that Jesus commanded because that's what he wants us to do, right? Right. Uh, Jesus in the Great Commission said, go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. And so that's the goal. That's Jesus' goal. He wants us to be obedient to everything he commanded. So if you're not striving to do that, then why would you ever be trying to hear the voice of God through some other means other than the Bible? If you're ignoring what he said to everybody, why? what gives you the right to look for specific guidance that God has just for you alone? Think about it, okay? So, the, you know, so, uh, and I, uh, you know, it could be said different ways. I'm kind of conflicted as to how best to say it as I'm talking to you here, but people who hear from the Lord beyond in the Bible, those are people who are obeying the commandments of Christ. Holiness and obedience is very, very, very important to them. They're, they're striving to, to conform to the general will of God for everybody, and only then do they even even think about seeking any specific guides for themselves that would be, you know, personalized and so forth, hearing from the Lord. Okay. So that'd be my first piece of advice, you know, work on obeying the general will for, for, for everybody by hearing the voice of God spoken through his prophets, through his apostles, through the inspired writers of the Bible. All right. Got that. That's a very important point. Uh, the second point would be, um, be very careful listening to so-called prophets. <laughs> you get in a lot of trouble. And I've watched people over the decades of my Christian life and ministry, you know, follow the directive of prophets and so forth, uh, telling them that, you know, different things, specific things, and they 
they do it expecting God's blessing, but they don't get God's blessing at all. And uh, it's too late then uh, when something has, uh, you know, gone downhill or even their lives have been destroyed. Don't listen to someone who tells you you're supposed to marry such and such a person or you're supposed to start such and such a business or you're supposed to sell your business and so forth. You don't want to trust anybody with, with that kind, those kinds of important decisions. God leads us primarily. Now, the specific guides that we have that you can't find in Scripture, God leads us primarily primarily by the inward witness of the Holy Spirit in our spirits. That's the main way. And that's not, that's not hearing an audible voice. That's totally different. Okay. We're talking about just uh, that still small voice, perhaps you could call it, to borrow a biblical phrase. And if someone is to give you a prophecy, you should examine it carefully. As the New Testament commands you, you know, it says, don't despise prophetic utterance, but examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. That's in one of Paul's letters to the Thessalonians. And, and so if someone gave me a prophecy and it was like a new revelation to me regarding guidance, for my life, I would just ignore it completely. If I didn't already have it in my own heart and was feeling led in that same direction, I just ignored. it. Now, if it confirmed something, uh, a prophecy, if a prophecy confirmed something that I already had in my heart and I was maybe trying to wrestle through, am I hearing God or am I not hearing God? I think I'm hearing from the Lord. I think I have the witness of the, of the spirit in my spirit, but boy, this is going to be a costly decision or this is a big decision and I'm a little bit anxious about it to get a confirming prophecy to help me, that's, you know, that that's okay. That's a different story. But if somebody in a church lays hands upon you and says, thus says the Lord, and they tell you something that's, you know, uh, guiding you in, in some essence, some in, in nature, it's guiding you in nature and saying, you should do thus and so. If you don't already have that in your own heart and spirit, then just ignore it, toss it out. Okay. And there's, there's thousands of these so-called prophets running around to churches and doing those types of things and making havoc of people's lives. And if you watch it long enough, you will see it. You also see the demise of those people, those so-called prophets eventually, because judgment does fall on false prophets. God's very merciful. God's very patient and long-suffering and often takes years. Of course, and then, of course, God warns them. Uh, repeatedly through lesser discipline, lesser judgment, but eventually, you know, if they don't repent, then then it gets pretty severe. Okay, and he'll 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 take them out. Uh, if, if nothing else, take them out of their ministry. Okay, might take them out of this world. Okay, that's a whole other subject. We'll talk sometime about the discipline of the Lord, which is, of course, entirely biblical. Under the Old Covenant, if somebody, you know, falsely prophesied, you know, they stoned him. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, you think it's a fearful thing to be saying God is saying and you're just making it up. Wouldn't you consider that a pretty big offense? <laughs> you know, that's serious, serious business. Okay, so uh, number one, first of all, you're obeying the Bible and you're sensitive to the word of God that God has given. Again, you know, just think about it from God's perspective. Why would he ever give you specific, unique guidance for yourself when you're ignoring his general guidance for everybody? How audacious is it of us to ask God to give us specific guidance you know, when we're ignoring his general guidance or his general commandments, I should say, in a, in a, in a stronger way. Okay? All right. And then number two, beware of anyone who claims to be a prophet. And again, if a prophet like Agabus comes to you, who has this, you know, incredible track record of everything that he foretells comes to pass, and he's widely respected, you know, by 
other respectable people in the body of Christ. Well, that's a little different story, but the, we've got all these unknown little people, you know, no one's ever heard of, you know, and they get on a thing called the Elijah list, which, you know, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, and these people have no, no real genuine miracles to speak of, no confirming, you know, signs or endorsement or affirmation from the Lord. All they are is people that speak prophecies and their, their prophecies are always so general. Um, you know, the, oh, the Lord, it's a new season. <laughs> if I had a dime for every new season prophecy that I've heard, you know, from so-called prophets, a new season. Here's what God's doing today. Here's what God's doing this month. Or you're entering into a new season. You know, you know. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay. The, again, these are children just playing dress up. Now, uh, I was, what prompted me to even share this on today's lesson was something that I read in the Bible in my private devotions, because I read the Bible just about every single day. And anyone who's serious about hearing the voice of the Lord, they're going to be in the Word you know, every day for the most part, because they love God's word. They know that God never lies. They know that his word is true and pure and right and good and applicable, you know. And so they're seeking him uh, through his word. So I was reading there in uh, the story of Samuel in the book, biblical book of First Samuel. Something very interesting here. A couple interesting things came out in this story. And you can read it yourself in 1 Samuel chapter 3. You know that Samuel uh, was born because his mother prayed, his barren mother prayed, and she said, Lord, if you'll give me a son, I'll dedicate him to you. And that's how Samuel wound up being raised uh, in, in the tabernacle there in Shiloh, uh, serving Eli, uh, who uh, didn't do such a good job raising his sons and judgment fell on the household of Eli. That's a whole other story. But but um, let me just read this first verse. This is interesting of, of 1 Samuel 3 and verse number one. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli and word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. Well, that's interesting. There's an ebb and flow of words from the Lord. And when, and when you see that phrase, words from the Lord, that's not like somebody saying, you know, having an impression. Uh, again, like I was describing before, the still small voice of the Lord or the, the, the guidance that the Holy Spirit gives us by just what we would call a leading or a, a green light or a, or a check in my spirit, you know, a cautionary light, the yellow light that, as we pray about certain things. No, the word of, words of the Lord were when, for example, a prophet literally heard the audible voice of God and it sounded to that prophet or prophetess just as plain as what I'm talking to you right now. It wasn't just a sense, you know, or a feeling. It was the word of, that's what they often say, the word of the Lord came to me saying, and so they're just dictating, you know, Jeremiah, Isaiah, guys just dictating as it's downloaded from heaven, as it were, okay? And so in that day, the word from the Lord was rare, we're told. And visions, which is another way that God speaks, were infrequent. Okay? And, um, uh, you know, you, you could ask yourself the question, well, how is it today? I would say that today it's a lot the same way. And I have my opinion as to why. I think it has a lot to do with how much we're actually truly seeking the Lord as the body of Christ and, and striving to please and obey him in all respects. But that's another subject in itself. So anyways, here, here's where the story gets interesting. First Samuel 3 and verse number 2, it happened at that time as Eli, that's the, the, the old priest, was, was Eli was lying down in his place. And parenthetically, we're told now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And uh, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Uh, that the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. So the Lord said, Samuel or Samuel. <laughs> you know, I don't know which it was, but you know, he, Samuel heard his name being called and he heard it and he thought 
that it was Eli calling him. It sounded just as real as if Eli called him. And it had not, it obviously wasn't like a computer voice or, you know, a thundering voice. It was a voice that was close enough to what uh, Samuel had heard when Eli would call him, you know, not that much different. So he actually thought it was Eli. So then he ran to Eli and he said, here I am for you called me. So he had no idea that it was the Lord. He heard it audibly. Um, uh, 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 but anyways, uh, let's see. Then he ran to Eli and, and he said, here I am for you called me. But he, he said, I did not call you. That's Eli. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called him again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. But he, Eli, answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. <laughs> now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord been revealed. And this is the first time that he ever heard the audible voice of God as prophets sometimes do. And so the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and he said, here I am for you called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. <laughs> Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. It shall be, if he calls you, you shall say, speak Lord for your servant is listening. Now that's very interesting. Um, although Eli wasn't the best, best guy in the world, he at least recognized uh, something was going on here that was supernatural. And he also recognized that Samuel needed to respond to the Lord's calling him by saying something like, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, you could ask yourself the question, why didn't God, well, you know, why didn't God just say, when he, when he, when he said three times, Samuel... Why didn't he say, Samuel, this is the Lord, and uh, here's the message that I have for you, which ultimately, of course, God did give him a, a message. Why didn't he just start off that way? Well, I, it, the Bible doesn't say, but I'm, I'm considering what the rest of Scripture teaches us here. And uh, one thing I've noticed about the Lord, of course, is his gentlemanly character, for lack of a better way of saying that, because I almost think that sounds a little bit too trite. But God is not forcing himself on people for the most part. He's very gentle and he, he, he woos us, right? Uh, he draws us. He tries to get our attention. But if we don't respond, then he just says, well, guess they're not interested. I don't want to stick my nose in there without being desired or wanted. There's a really cool story in uh, one of the Gospels. I believe it's got Mark chapter, I believe it's the Gospel of Mark. I'm thinking it's chapter six, but I could be wrong. It might be 13 or something. But you know, when Jesus sent the disciples out in the boat to cross the Sea of Galilee, and it says that he came out to them walking on the water, and it actually says in Mark's Gospel, he intended to pass by them, even as they were struggling against the wind and had been fighting the wind for hours and hours and hours, and it's the middle of the night, you know, and they don't have to get any sleep, and no doubt they're all cranky and frustrated. And Jesus comes out and you think, well, he's coming out to help. Oh no, no, he's, he's, he's going to the other side. <laughs> and and uh, they saw him and they cried out. And then he, you know, said, uh, don't fear it's me and so forth. And they thought they were seeing a ghost. And, but again, I'm, I'm just honing in on that one phrase there in Mark's gospel. He intended to pass by them. He was walking on the water towards them, but he intended to walk right by. In other words, I'm not going to stick my nose in your business. If you want to struggle against the wind by your, on your own strength, have at it, buddy. You know, I'm going places, you know, and I wonder how many times the Lord has walked by my boat as I was struggling to make it on my own, you know, and, and not realizing that Jesus was right over there just waiting to help me and shaking his head saying, you know, I wonder what's wrong with David. Why doesn't he call out to me and I'd help him here? You're probably the same. All right. So, so there, there you have it. Uh, that's something that Samuel learned right from the start. He, you have to be sensitive and desire to hear from God. Seek and ye shall find. Didn't, did, Jesus didn't say you'll find whether or not you seek. No, seek 
and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened, and, and, so, and so forth. So, of course, as I said earlier in this little lesson, you know, if you're, if you're interested in hearing from God specifically, you're going to be diving into the Bible on a regular basis to hear from God generally right? Don't fool yourself otherwise. So this, this is an example of that. So let's read a little bit more in the story here. The Lord came and stood and called as at other times. So this is more than just a voice. This is the Lord making an appearance. He, he, he sta- Again, it says, then the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. So he's nearby. And he, and he calls this time, Samuel, Samuel, Again, not giving him the full revelation, just trying to get his attention and get his response. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. So then, you know, he's saying, okay, I'm wide open. I want to hear from you, Lord. You're not butting in. You're welcome and invited here. The Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And that, that's a, that's a, a little bit of a hyperbole on the Lord's part. Sometimes the Lord does speak in hyperboles uh, or, you know, an exaggeration for effect. In that day, I will carry out against Eli all that I've spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I'm about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. Well, there's a sermon there, isn't it? Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. And isn't that... Uh, very solemn news that there's no way out of this judgment. There's nothing you can do. No sacrifice is going to atone for this. You're going to face the consequences. And um, you know the story, of course, the next morning, uh, Eli asked Samuel, would the Lord say to you, don't hold anything back? And so Samuel told him, Eli just shrugged his shoulders. Well, let's you know, that's what the Lord's going to do. And of course, the Lord had already told him that through another prophet. So he, he was just being confirmed by what uh, happened to Samuel. But anyways, uh, Samuel then, that was the beginning of his ministry. And if we read subsequent verses, I haven't put them here in my notes, but very shortly thereafter, read about how the Lord continued to speak to Samuel and to appear to him in some form. Um, uh, I think it's called a theophany, I for, you know, an appearance of, of God of the pre-incarnate Christ. I forget what that's called by theologians. Escape me at this moment. But in, in any case, this is special, and this shows you what um, how, how, how God uses real prophets. The Lord then used Samuel, read this in subsequent verses, uh, and spoke to him, and then those words spread to all of Israel because everyone recognized that he was a prophet. And Samuel wasn't just saying, well, I just sense that there's a new season coming. And he wasn't saying, I, I have this feeling that the Lord is kind of, you know, leading. No, no, no. He would say, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, and I'm going to dictate to you what the Lord said to me. Or the Lord appeared to me, and here were the words that he said to me, and I'm going to relay them on to you. That's the ministry of the prophet. That's also the ministry of the New Testament prophet. Um, there better be some real supernatural equipment before you ever call yourself a bonafide a prophet okay and of course there are delusional people that a lot of them are, are in asylums you know locked away uh who think they're hearing the, from god who are actually hearing from demons and and it's obvious because what they're hearing doesn't agree with the word of god whatsoever it's 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 antithetical to the word of god and those people get locked up and sedated and so forth because uh, even though they're hearing voices and they think it's God speaking to them, it's not really God. And that is tragic. Um, and if you, if you have an aspiration to hear the audible voice of God, I would encourage you to forget that aspiration. It's not promised you anywhere in the Bible that you're going to hear God's audible voice. That's completely up to the sovereign will of God, and but you can open yourself up to the wrong stuff if you start really, you know, having this desire, allowing yourself to have a desire and, and, and any kind of an expectation to hear audible voices, because then you might open yourself up up to the dark side and be hearing not from God, but be hearing from, you know, evil spirits. 
God's never promised you that. But God has promised us that he will lead us and guide us by his spirit. And again, anyone who's been walking with the Lord for any, you know, length of time will tell you, you know, there, I've never heard the audible voice of God a single time in, in 40 and more years of following Jesus. Okay, uh, but I have certainly been led by the Holy Spirit on numerous occasions, and that comes, you, you just know that you know that, oh, that's an inspiration from the Lord. That's a leading from the Lord. And, and of course, we always check to make sure it lines up with the Bible. It's not going to be contrary to the Bible. If the Lord tells you, you know, if you have the impression to take off your clothes and run naked through the streets, you know, uh, you know. Probably not the Lord leading you, you know, to do that. The Lord's leading you to get, you know, take somebody's husband from them or take somebody's wife. You know, that's not the Lord. Um, but to do something good for someone, to to serve in some ministerial capacity, to give to someone who is in need, to sow your finances into uh, uh, the work of a missionary or to care for the poor and so forth. This is how the Holy Spirit leads us in line with His general will for everybody, uh, but it's specific for us. And how do you learn that? Well, you learn it by trial and error. So if you think the Lord's leading you, um, you know, uh, go ahead and act on it. Uh, you know, don't take too much of a risk. You know, you could maybe feel it out first or ask others who you respect as, uh, you know, more mature Christians, uh, whether or not what you're hearing from the Lord would fall in the spectrum of what God might say to somebody uh, or how God might lead somebody. Okay. Uh, but you probably will make some mistakes uh, like we all have. And many of us can say we thought we were hearing, hearing from the Lord. We acted on it. And then we realized it was, just, it was just our own brains motivated by our own selfishness. If you can't say amen, so say, oh, me, okay, <laughs> or our own desires, you know, and, you know, it, it's funny how God so often seems to be leading everybody to do what they want to do. <laughs> oh, me, <laughs> oh, me, oh, my. All right, so that's just a little primer on it, but that gives you the basics on hearing from the word of the Lord. Hope it is helpful to you. Hey, uh, something else that uh, could be helpful to you is if you check out one of our two very important websites, the one I want to talk about is heavensfamily.org. That's the word heaven, the letter S on the word family. There, you will have see an opportunity to obey the general will of God, and God may lead you then specifically what he wants you to do. But there's no doubt that God has told every one of his children uh, who have the means to be helping the poor. Uh, amongst his family, the least of these. Read it in Matthew chapter 25, verses 24, 21 through 36. I, how can I, I must be getting old. I'm forgetting something that I know so well. Um, Matthew 31 through 46. Okay, Matthew 25, you'll find it. And um, uh, no doubt, you know, that, 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 that's a mark of being saved. Uh, and, and it's also a mark of being unsaved if you don't care about the poor in God's family and those who are suffering. All right, so Heaven's Family exists for that very reason, to give you opportunity to get involved in caring for the least of these, lay up treasure in heaven, and uh, affirm that you are in fact uh, a lover in and a, a lover of and a believer in Jesus Christ. All right, check out heavensfamily.org. Until next time, may the Lord keep on blessing you.